It just doesn't get any better than this, does it? Our TiVo Airview Cam. Showing us surface paradise in all its glory. But it's business down on the track. It's going to be interesting at the front row, car five and car six <laughs> alongside each other. What's your prediction uh, down to turn four, perhaps, Gabe? <laughs> I'll have a lot of money, Matt, that there is no contact between those two cars. After FBR's <laughs> dramas yesterday, it'll be, it'll be gentlemen racing. No, no, you go first. No, no, no you go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, they might um, take their time so much that the cars behind them end up collecting them on the way. It will certainly be a dramatic start. There's no question about that. And it's a staggered start here along the front straight of the Gold Coast, but we can't wait for this one. Two minutes signal, two minutes signal. So the grid has now been mostly cleared. Our international flags are flying high. 12 nationalities represented here today. And what has been an outstanding weekend of motorsport and the V8 supercars taking pride of place on the streets of Surface Paradise. Let's check out the Fuso Star Grid and run you through some of our co-drivers as well. Winterbottom and Yulden and Richards and Will Power form an all FPR front row. Courtney and Luff, car 18, position three against Wing Cup and Steve Owen. So there's your two championship contenders. Jason Bright and Elaine Menu, a two-time British touring car championship winner. Shane Van Gisbergen and John McIntyre, all Kiwis. Car 33, position 7. There's Paul Dumbrell and Jacques Villeneuve, the Canadian in V8 supercars. Jason Richards and Andrew Jones alongside Rick and Owen Kelly. Car 888 will start from position 11. Craig Lowndes and Andy Prio from the UK, three-time World Touring Car Championship winner. Dario Franchitti won here in the Indy cars in 1999. Ivan Muller driving with Greg Murphy, Ivan from France, World Touring Car Champion, and also has won in the V8 Supercars, the Sandown 500, some five years ago. Scott Dixon paired up with Todd Kelly. They'll start position 16. 17 belongs to Davison and Brabham. 18, Dalberto and Tiago Montero. 37 Formula One starts in his career. Look out for Sebastian Bourdais today. He knows how to win here. And he showed yesterday he also knows how to handle a V8 supercar. Will Davison and Ryan Briscoe. Ryan was the last winner on the streets of surface for the Indy cars in 2008. Elio Castro Neves with Tim Slade, Fabian Coulthard and David Reynolds. To the rear of the grid, Russell Ingall teamed up with Jack Perkins, Carl Reindler and Fabrizio Giovinardi, a two-time British touring car champion from Italy. Another Italian, Dean Fiore with Gianni Morbidelli, 67. Formula One starts and car 29, uh, car 30 in position 29 is Nathan Pretty and Scott Pruitt. They will start from pit lane. One of the interesting things for me, Matt, is the uh, fact that after yesterday's race experience, I was wondering to myself this morning, and I apologise for this voice, folks, <clears throat> that uh, would the teams go about the strategy play with how they use their drivers a little differently depending on what they experienced yesterday. And the answer is they've pretty much duplicated what we saw yesterday. Here's the track that Mark and Matty have been describing in great detail, three kilometres, 15 corners. And uh, Scafi, it's, it's been a real success, that new hairpin down at turn four. There's been a lot of action and a lot of passing down there. It has been good, hasn't it? The flow through one, two, three has made it faster. And it's made it a, a, a proper braking area into that hairpin, Neil. And we saw lots of chaos there yesterday. We'll probably see a bit here Today, two cars starting car 24 and car 30 from pit lane. So that's probably not a bad policy either. <laughs> so just to go back to those remarks, if you sort of look at um, the, those that you might regard as the nominated driver versus co-driver, the more senior and experienced V8 supercar driver, because they're, they're all senior drivers in this field virtually, uh, the vast majority have got their, inverted commas, co-driver in the car. There's uh, David Reynolds on board there. So uh, the exception to that is again Michael Caruso in the Fujitsu entry. So remember yesterday had a very good opening sequence and they put Pat Long in later, his Jack Perkins. Car number five, for example, Luke Yulden's at the helm. This is Ivan Muller leading the uh, World Touring Car Champion, uh, Championship. And he's driving Greg Murphy's car. Murph had a lot of pace yesterday in the late stages of the race and found himself in a tangle. Here's Owen Kelly. He's uh, teamed up with Rick, who also should have finished higher up the list. Such a tale of woe as you go down pit lane after this race, and it could have been so different 
for Cam McConville and Garth Tander on all sorts of fronts, and in the end, they popped out with the race win. The fellow that I think will be well served by the way they line up here at the moment, we know this fellow Steve Owen's got pace in the team Vodafone car, and that car's clearly better match to the racetrack today than it was yesterday. But Stephen Richards will start off effectively the staggered front row in the number six Ford Performance Racing Falcon. Should be pretty handy. He's got a lot of mileage under his under his belt. He knows the track, he knows the cars, and uh, he'll be well back, served here. Back, back, back about 10 metres. Yeah. Luke, Luke Yildon has missed. Okay, you, you're, right, you're lined up in the box. Just keep going back, mate. He's, about another three metres. He's driven past the, the spot. Past the spot. Keep, going, keep 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 going. Okay, stop there. Okay, mate. It's a long race. If you need to leave us at any stage, you can catch our coverage on your Telstra Next G mobile phone. And that would have rattled Luke Yildon a little bit. That's not a good start. No. No, yeah, I mean, it's not the sort of thing you need going through your mind, trying to find reverse, trying to get back to a box that you can't see. Exactly. You're not going to be able to see any of that. So the boys on the radio, they're trying to help. And nerves have definitely played a part. I mean, Warren Luff is a cool customer. But you go down there to Jim Beam Racing and they admit it. Look, he was nervous yesterday because this is a big weekend. He's driving the championship leading car. This is on. It certainly is. Stephen Richards on our left. Luke Yildon on the right. Behind them is Warren Love and Steve Owen. Can they get through this one unscathed? The two FPR cars side by side oh, lead them down. In trouble at the back. Also, Jason Bright in big trouble. He's dropping a bunch of spots. They had a broken axle with that car yesterday. Through the chicane the first time. The Trading Post car is basically neutralised. Down around turn four. This is where all the drama unfolded yesterday. Unbelievably, they've all gone through cleanly. So Menu, Elaine Menu on board with Jason Bright's car has gone right to the back. And Greg Ritter was the Fujitsu car that was basically stopped. Great start, Steve Richards. Luke Yildon right behind. Steve Owen, Warren Love and McIntyre in Van Gisbergen's car. That's your top five. And, and stopped. This is bad news. This will be safety car for sure. On the grid, safety for the car stopped on line. Entry to turn four. Safety car continued through the lane. There you go. Exactly the same as yesterday, but without the carnage. And then back on. Ignition switch off and then back on, please. And running Yvonne, uh, Elaine Menu through the processes here on the trading post entry. I think it probably started with a clutch problem. Uh, because you just have a look right in the bottom right of your screen there you just see the orange car it moves away okay there's the Fujitsu car parked at the back that's Greg Ritter but then along the, the short straight section leading into turn one seem losing all those spots and uh, Greg Ritter's reporting having to start the car in gear in 33 so he had a clutch problem for sure in 33 oh they've done ama an amazing job not to hit that car Folks, you, you cannot believe the acceleration of these cars. And just have a look how they miss him. Firstly, Jason Richards, then Andy Prio. Oh, it's actually Andrew Jones in that car. Brian, so both those guys Brian did a Briscoe. really good job. Brian Briscoe missed him by Four nothing. Millimetres. Now, this is the view out the back of car five. Luke Yildon has a good look around to make sure the coast is clear. Stephen Richards, by this stage, says, I'm getting out of here.
Tokyo. So in a carbon copy of what happened yesterday without all the panel damage, we will have a rolling restart. The safety car has now left the scene. Safety car, clear return. And we're ready to go. Stephen Richards leads the way. Luke Yulden behind him. Steve Owen is tucked in in third. Down they go, single file. It was a very conservative restart there by Steve Richards. He started, accelerated the car very, very late. Didn't get the, he got a little bit of wheel spin and didn't get the yield versus Luke Yulton that he would have been looking for. And that's basically bunched everybody up. That's Owen Kelly up the inside of McIntyre. They've made great ground. They basically started, they started in 10th and they're now 5th. So it's a really good first, well, first lap properly. This is now the first lap of the race. This is interesting. Villeneuve has slotted back a couple of spots. Michael Caruso got him. So Villeneuve now drops back to ninth. Oh, oh, massive crash. Yeah, that is a really big crash. It's car number four. It's David Brabham. He'd made really good ground also, Matt, but that hit the was fence really, really hard. Owen Kelly was pointing the wrong way too. That was huge. So that was Owen Kelly rejoining, coming from up the escape road at turn 11. But David made massive contact with that wall on the left. Well, the best news is that he has found the runoff down there at turn 11. Meanwhile, back around the front straight, Stephen Richards continues his lead. So it's Hilden second. There's Owen. Safety car boards and flags. Safety car boards and flags. And so there must be a lot of debris down there. It was massive impact. And the car's out of the way, but the race director, Tim Shekin, has alerted the safety car. There was another car involved. Here oh. it is. My goodness. He has just gone flying into that from the right-hand side of the circuit into the left-hand wall. It was Cam the other yeah. car. Have a look. And it's a, there's contact. Look at this. And then that is fast. That's fourth gear, and that is a really fast section of road. The car would be doing something like 180 kilometres an hour. I think Cam had started to make a move to go <clears throat> around the outside, and the gap disappeared. So there's been a misunderstanding there. I think Cam has actually made contact, didn't he? Yeah. To the left-hand rear. So it's parked. And it's a mess.
might explain it a little bit more for David Brabham coming out of the chicane. It's Camber Conville behind him. And here is where all goes wrong. Ugly. Very ugly. Yeah, boys, I was just talking to uh, Rob down here at HRT. Cameron McConville said basically the gap closed in front of him, so he didn't see himself so much a part of that incident. Uh, it's quickly on the Jason Bright car. It's dead. <laughs> Great technical run down there, Loka. Good job. <laughs> Jason Bright didn't get a drive today. The lane menu was behind the wheel. Caruso straight up the inside of McIntyre. Good pass for turn four. Nice clean pass. And McIntyre didn't block. He, he yielded. Was very sensible to do that early. Right behind him now is Andrew Jones in the BOC Commodore. So Steve Richards leads from Yildon. Steve Owen, Warren Love, Michael Caruso. It's your top five. And these next few laps are quite important. You want to go and do three or four really good solid laps. Don't make a mistake. Establish what your car speed's like versus other guys. Get a feel for the balance of the car. Shift the sway bars around if you need the car to turn a little bit more. And try to establish what sort of thing that you've got on board now with Warren Luff. That's Michael Caruso right behind. You can't get too much closer than that without giving it a little rub. And as they go down into turn one, Michael will be trying to set Warren Luff up for the turn four pass that he put on the SP Tools Falcon the previous lap. So as it was yesterday, Caruso's the one that's making good ground. Well, they ticked all the boxes yesterday, car 34. And here he comes, as predicted, down at turn four. Another clean move. And Warren Love does not want to buy into that at this stage of the race. So Caruso continues his charge. He now goes up to fourth. He's got a lot of confidence in that car and confidence too in his co-driver, Patrick Long to hand it over what they did yesterday they played a different strategy they wanted long out there when he didn't have to battle against these guys and it worked brilliantly and this is where this first part of the story will be there's patrick long ready to jump on board at some point but what will happen here is steve owen will not want steve richards to get away too much so he'll put a bit of pressure on yielded now in the next couple of laps because he'll want to stay in contact with steve richards Another interesting point here is that Pat's dressed ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Very often you see... Very often you see the other driver not necessarily always ready. It's, it's not a bad idea in a race like this to be dressed ready to go, just in case things change quickly. So he's absolutely ready and on standby to jump in if he needs to for any bizarre reason. And Neil, to add to that, down on the grid before the race, both the drivers, Holdsworth and Patrick Long, took their hands devices, their helmets, their gloves, everything down there. They waited to see who was in what car before they actually made the decision who was going to drive. Steve Owen pulls up alongside Luke Yildon. And as you said, Mark, Owen is chasing down Steve Richards. He wants car one to be as close to six as he can when he takes it back to the team bosses and to Jamie Wincup. 
Oh, Caruso. and Caruso down the inside. Good pass. That's a really good authoritative pass at a place so far this weekend we haven't seen too many effective manoeuvres at. He's on a mission, isn't he? Mike He's driving Caruso. well, isn't he? He was down the order, he's come from position 14. But as a regular driver, he's up against many non-regulars, so he's using that advantage he's got at the moment. He said all weekend that it's been a good race car, hasn't he? He's been commenting about his race car performance, and this vindicates that. So it's pretty hectic there still, with Yildon, Luff and McIntyre battling. Luff battle to get stopped then he had to cheat the first part of that corner and start to turn it in early you always can tell here we go down the inside comes Prio with a bit of contact with Villeneuve you don't need to have that going very much and Villeneuve now comes across to crowd him this is on damage. and there's damage on the okay. left front of the bottle of car and this is wild when you get to here you don't need to be alongside there's Lanza having a laugh. <laughs> He's not really laughing behind that laugh. There's a bit of genuine concern. It's, it's a nervous shake of the head. <laughs> it's a grimace. Yeah. <laughs> what about that for a comeback from Villeneuve? You tap me on the exit of four and I'll get you back by the chicane. Thank you. Here it is. This is where Villeneuve got bumped yesterday and it was a good save. Reasonably light contact, but a good bit of oversteer car control. There's Lanza with the... Yeah, that's, little, you're right, yeah, that's a grimace. That's a grimace. Yeah. <laughs> Think of your worst angry face at home, folks. That's that's Lousy's worst. Oh, no, it was pretty angry after qualifying. That's true, it yeah. was pretty angry after there. But anyway, so we're on with life. This is uh, Steve Richards from Steve Owen, Michael Caruso, Luke Gilden, Warren Luff, and McIntyre. He top six. Andrew Jones, Villeneuve, Prio, and McConville make up the ten. Lights to the side indicate that the co-driver is behind the wheel and car 10 has gone off the circuit. That's Mika Salo. Yeah, and it's in a dangerous spot there unless he can get reverse and get it pulled back the other way. I can't turn it at all anymore. It's turn 13. <laughs> He's had enough. Okay, so this will explain it through the chicane. Definite contact with the wall coming up. Bingo. That's the beginning of it. And then I think you'll find he went through one of the chicanes and then later something's failed and he's had to park it. So another contact of car 12, Morbidelli. Yeah, that was Greg Ritter down the inside of him. And he gives Morbidelli 
a whack in the rear wheel, turns him straight round. Guys, something you don't see very often, I haven't seen it in our time, but a, a torque wrench was left on the grid when the cars took off. Now it was left next to Jamie Wincup's car. Uh, Team Vodafone have just put their hand up and said, yep, that is actually ours, and officials will have a chat afterwards. Post-race, there'll be an investigation and a possible penalty. Thanks, Barretts. Just while you were talking, we were watching Will Power. Car six, the lead car. Look at this, it's a traffic jam again in pit lane. They're stacking them and racking them at Team Vodafone. So, Will Power was having a lot of trouble there. He wasn't ready. No. Neil Crompton was just saying a second ago, we saw Jamie Winkup in the pit area, not ready to go racing. And obviously, Will Power has been in the garage. Steve Richards has come in, and now, right behind, there's another one queued. They're queued everywhere. There's absolute chaos down there. Here we go. It's a domino effect, too. So we saw Patrick Long ready to go racing three or four laps ago, and they're still waiting for Will Power. I mean, they've dropped the car, and they haven't even shut the door. And the other car's been affected because it's queued. OK, Will. Well, we were talking about it personally oh. in the ad break, you know, the difference between Pat Long dressed, ready to go, and then I saw the shots of Jamie, and I just queried whether it's good policy because weird things can happen in these races. Even though there's a strategy in the rules that you've got to adhere to about the one-thirds, two-third, jeez, that's just messy. Keystone cops all that.
last lap under the safety car. This is lap number 17 of the 102 that we have in the race. And Warren Luff is leading the way. Now, don't forget, he's yet to win a V8 supercar race. He's not yet pitted either, so they're not going to be able to bring the before he wins the car. Okay, safety car, let's just speed 80 kilometers an hour, 80, 80. Car increasing to 88 to your right. Safety car lights out, safety car lights out, accelerate away from the field, car 18 to main speed, main speed. Here at uh, Ford Performance Racing, I mean, Will Power didn't even have his gloves on at this stage. The driver's assistant is trying to work through his helmet set up. Stephen Richards gets dragged out. Will's going, where's, where's my gloves? How do I get in? How am I going to get in? Meanwhile, they're all stacked up, and there was contact there. That looks as though there was contact there with car eight into one of the uh, Toll HRT cars. Car 34 tries to be released. Patrick Long dives in. And look at it, it's just a car oh, park. It's just <laughs> Saturday shopping centre stuff. But lunacy in that the car that was effectively Drop leading the, the race then. comes Drop in for a stop then. like that. The driver's not ready and you go back to pretty much last. It's 26th. So the restart, every co-driver, excluding one, Tony Ricciardello, every co-driver in the field are in the cars right now. Just on all that uh, congestion in the pits yesterday when there was the bump and grind down there that raised some eyebrows with those wheels getting bumped so hard. After the investigation, the stewards gave Gary Rogers Motorsport a 10 championship point penalty for an unsafe release of car 34. So Warren Luff leads from John McIntyre, Dario Franchitti, Sebastian Bourdais, Jack Perkins. That's your top five. So remember the co-drivers have to complete a third of the race distance. They have to do 34 laps. That's what's going on here. That's why all these green lights are on the dash. John McIntyre wants to get a hurry along on the back of car 18. So Warren Luff, this is for the race lead. McIntyre's been very impressive this weekend as well. He's driven well in all of the endurance races, Matt. He's, he's been very impressive the whole time. The other part of this now, it's a good opportunity for Bourdais, who was really good yesterday, and for Jack Perkins, a great story. Jack Perkins with Russell Engel. Obviously, Jack's father, Larry, one of the absolute legends of Australian motorsport and had a great history with Russell Engel when they drove Castrol Commodores. For Larry's young bloke, Jack, to be partnered with Russell now. And a good opportunity for Jack to get his head down and attack some of the internationals. Jack was nine years old when Russell won his first the two Bathurst with Larry. <laughs> Does that we, make you feel old? Well, you don't even know Russell's age, do you, really? He's, he's dragged it back so much, he's almost got new car warranty. <laughs> he's 40-something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been 34 for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so McIntyre, a lot of pressure on Warren Luff in the series-leading car with the New Zealander all over him. And here we go. Tiago Montero down the inside of Helio Castro Neves. And Giovanardi down the inside of Neves also. Villeneuve, Villeneuve also. Briscoe's in the mix. This is ugly. Villeneuve cramps him, gets through there okay. Briscoe gives Neves a little bump as they come down to the last corner. Elio's got some sort of a problem. He's just been tr dropping back, 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 back through the pack. Okay, if it's damaged, if the car's damaged, box this lap and we'll fix it. Owen Kelly gets clear. He's coming in. And there's Will Power right behind Owen Kelly. So Elio's in. Stay in the car, Elio. Stay in the car. We'll just check out the damage. So the car's damaged. We'll have a look and see what that damage is. There's nothing in this one out at the front. Luff just can't shake John McIntyre. The lead's only 0.4 of a second. 
the rearward view tells the story. They go to work on the Wilson security car. Castro Neves stays in it and heads back out. Fourth in the IndyCar Series World Championship this year, Helio. Just ahead of our Ryan Briscoe. And this is this battle I was referring to before. There's Dario Franchitti, one of the world's most accomplished drivers, teaming up with Steve Johnson for the weekend. And right behind is Sebastian Bourdais, a very successful French driver driving for Peugeot in their sports car program with young Jack Perkins right behind him. And he'll make Bourdais work. He's kind of a, a professor of his craft, Sebastian Bourdais, very methodical at what he does. He's very French for one of a better phrase. <laughs> but he is, he's, he's very, very driven, obviously, four champ car titles in a row. He had success here twice on the streets of Surface Paradise in 05 and 07. He's brought a lot to this team. They like the way he operates. Business only for Sebastian Bourdais. Jack has a little look. That's a spot that you've got to be really well positioned for. We saw Michael Caruso get the job done into there before, but it's, it is one, as I said, that is easy to make contact with the car and very easy to end up with both cars out of the race. We're on board now with Jack as he's right up behind. Have a look here at this braking markers and how difficult it is to get the car stopped. That was Helio Castroneves. Uh, he bumped the rear panel onto the rear tyre. We're seeing the smoke come up. So panicked a little bit, backed off. They brought the uh, car in, fixed the rear panel, changed the wheel, and he's away again. Yeah, I mean, it's a little unfortunate, Brett, because when you're not really familiar with the cars and you have given the wall a brush, it's hard to know how much damage you've done. And in fact, for Helio to do that is probably a pretty good sign of a good, responsible attitude to this weekend. A lot of drivers over the years would have said, no problem, press on, and you end up with some rear tyre damage and end up in the fence, don't you? So, I mean, it's probably a pretty responsible, professional way that he's gone about that. So, as I said before, Warren Luff leading from John McIntyre, and McIntyre right behind him, 0.3 of a second, there it is. And he's very strong in this section of the track, in the last segment of the circuit, it's definitely hotter out there also. We can see that cabin temperature almost 40 degrees. And a lot of these internationals not used to the demands of a V8 supercar, nor the temperature inside these cars. And you start to work pretty hard. You think safety cars make it easier, but in fact, sometimes they make it worse, Neil, don't they? You end up, you get the heat soak, you don't get the air through the car, and you start to feel the warmth of what a Gold Coast track provides. Damage. That's Caruso. Car 34, so front right damage. The best place car in the field that's stopped so far is Greg Ritter. Both Steve Owen and Cam McConville are really charging back up in this field. Here's Jack down the inside of Sebastian and does it. Good pass. I just wonder what Patrick Long has hit there in car 34. Undoing all the great work done by his co-driver. Continue to take a look at Jack Perkins in action. So Luff leads him through. Scott Pruitt's done the fastest first sector split in the Gulf Western entry. There he is in the foreground as we look at the replay. And oh. this is the reason why there's damage down there. Contact with Andrew Jones behind the wheel of Team BOC. And it limps all the way up the back and then blows on him. Well, he's bumped something. Lucky to get away with that, actually. He's bumped something and that's put the right-hand front. I've bumped the Team BOC car. McIntyre. Yeah, a little bumping duel, wasn't a little bit of dodgem car action on the way out of turn four. And that's punch at the right hand front and then run across that curb. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any more significant damage done to that car. Guys in the Irwin Tools garage, are Alex Davis and just debriefing with David Brabham. David, what happened out there? Uh, well, I had a very good start, which makes a change, uh, and uh, got up to 12. Actually got round the outside of Cameron at uh, turn four. And uh, the next lap went through the far chicane and I lost the rear a little bit. And then I lost a little bit of momentum. And of course, as you go out there, the natural line is to go over to the left because the, the, the car takes you there. 
and um, I'm not sure what Cameron was doing, but he was he was there, kept his foot in it, and it just buried me straight into the wall. So I'm just so disappointed for these guys because it really felt like we had a great car uh, after a great result uh, yesterday. But um, you know, it's sometimes these things happen. Thanks, Dave. Right, mate. Well, there's been a change at the front and then another change not at the very front because Warren Love continues to lead. But Dario Franchitti got around John McIntyre while we were talking to David Brabham. Franchitti got it up to second, but in a flash has now dropped back to fifth as Jack Perkins and Sebastian Bourdais got around him. So Jack Perkins was the real winner there. He dived down the inside of Bourdais. We saw that pass. And then he also got Franchitti. And then Bourdais dived at turn 11 down the inside of Dario and made another position. So there's Dario there. Right behind is Greg Ritter, who is, as Neil said, the effective leader of the race based on the stops. And down the inside he goes. So a good pass there. Just wonder if he's got a little bit of a problem, Dario Franchitti. Because they're rounding him up well and truly. Steve Owen pulling gears, trying to get the car into the right track position for this. Oh, and Dario still sneaks in in front of him, so it's pretty bold. That's a very brave section of road. It's very fast. 240 kilometre an hour entry, and Steve's pretty close here, but he won't have a dive. He knows the championship implications based on being second in the series, shared with Jamie Winkup. So Steve will be a little conservative in making sure he gets a good pass. But he, oh, here he is, a little conservative. Well done, Scavey. Just ran straight into the back of him. <laughs> <laughs> was that a very conservative good. touch? It was a very conservative touch. <laughs> that would be contact for no contact reason. <laughs> so Frank Kitty has responded to that challenge. Steve Owen gets encouragement. Warren Luff's lead at the front is half a second over John McIntyre. Tear guy that's done a really good job also is Scott Pruitt who started basically last from pit lane and he's up to ninth so he's done a good job we've said all weekend he probably hasn't done as many laps as he would have liked it's been a horror weekend for them but he's done a really good solid job that's him just up behind steve owen and cam mcconville so david brabham was pretty critical of cam mcconville there we were sort of riding with david in that incident coming out of the fast chicane a lot of damage to that car and out of the race it's warren luff continues to lead this race from McIntyre and McIntyre is keeping the heat on he's done a really good job certainly keeping Warren honest in this important phase of the race they've got to get to at least lap 34 these co-drivers before they can change over that's their minimum requirement as one third of their 102 laps in this 300 kilometer race today our Kiwi viewers would know John McIntyre well more than 50 races in the NZV8 championship he's 33 years of age he pops up regularly in the endurance events and right now he's doing a terrific job in forcing maximum pressure on the championship leading car driven by warren love and he's doing a good job because i think the straight line speed is not that good matt um, this race although it's not necessarily about fuel economy at bathurst the stones had a fuel the fuel consumption was a big part of their strategy they wrote their fuel consumption back they basically had an economy run engine setting for the day and that hurt their overall speed you've got to be mindful of that here to give you flexibility in terms of strategy and if you watch when they come onto the main straight mcintyre has been really strong in this segment of the lap but watch how close he is to the back of warren luff when they come onto the straight and what sort of gap warren luff is able to Sneak away, watch this. Good drive out of that corner. Obviously, some of the gap comes from there, but you watch him just get away from McIntyre down the straight. So, so this is Steve Owen getting past uh, Dario Frank Kitty. Dario very professionally stays wide. Nice move, Steve Owen. Nice clean manoeuvre. And the next one to line up, this is replay from just outside. They both get around there quite well. Not too much drama there. And the next one to line up for that move will be Cam McConville.
So if you remember yesterday, car nine ended up on the podium of Van Gisbergen and McIntyre. Black flag, that's Scott Pruitt's entry, the Gulf Western Racing. And he's already in the pit lane. So we saw him up the escape road, turn 11. Got himself into the top 10. He was one of them that hadn't stopped. Best placed car in the field that has stopped is Greg Ritter. Right behind him, Steve Owen. Luff, McIntyre, Perkins, Paul Day. They're still to stop and we're expecting them to come in around about 15 odd laps from now, in the mid 40s, depends on how much economy they've uh, been able to realise under the safety car interventions of which there have been three. Oh, that was wild. That's Ryan Briscoe. It's a big slide. Just ha this happened by itself. Locked the rear brakes. Turned around. That was very weird. Ryan's had some experience in these cars. He's obviously a, a really good operator driving for Penske in the US and come into turn four, locked the rear brakes and turned around, very gentle slide, no damage, but it looked a little weird in terms of maybe a brake issue there on that car. He's done a good job here, McIntyre, he's kept Warren Love honest, very busy, exactly, he would have... <laughs> Uncomfortably close yeah. <laughs> if you're Warren Love and uh, really nicely placed if you're John McIntyre, so... You know, Jack Perkins. To... Also, two nails done a good job there, hasn't he? Just sucking the line. Yeah, mate, you're doing a good job. We're going to leave you in for a few more laps, so you need to uh, reconnect your cool suit if you disconnected it. So just uh, hang in there, doing a good job. Scott Sinclair talking to Warren Luff. Good place to have your cool suit functioning. And a lot of time to get it reconnected. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I, be, I wouldn't have said a word. Need to do a few more laps, don't worry about that cool suit. <laughs> That's one of the other things too with the modification to the circuit. There's there's no downtime really. The back straight shorter. And clearly car 18 has it in straight line speed against car nine. But around here is where McIntyre gets right up to the rear of Warren Luff. We're riding with Jack Perkins. Just have a good look at Jack's steering technique. He's obviously spent a long time around motor racing. And I'm impressed by, that was Paul Morris, 
in his ear. I'm impressed by his technique. Just have a good close look at a lap of this place. It's a very busy lap, especially when you... Oh, McIntyre, a little locked wheel there, a little right front and straight through. Oh, so was Jack. And that's because he's taking some of his visual cues from the car in front. Jack did a beautiful job at Phillip Island with Tim Slade, Wilson security entry. Whoops, he just misshifted. So he's got to get his rhythm back now. He just got a bit out of sequence. Followed McIntyre in on that mistake at the chicane. We saw the misshift from second to third. He, he started to get a little bit closer too, so he's probably started to get a bit excited about the prospect of getting a move on here as uh, Russell gets organised. The best place, or well, the best thing for Jack to do at the moment is just sit, wait and watch. If something comes to him, take it. But if uh, I wouldn't be taking too many risks in a 102 lap race at this point. Exactly right. So a little mistake there by McIntyre. That's the first one that we've seen him make. He's driven very well. And Jack Perkins was caught up in the momentum of that mistake from McIntyre. Both guys okay, go off. Safety car. Window is open. Window is open. Confirm, please. And Jack had three options coming down here. As when McIntyre made his mistake, Jack could have gone further left, found the wall, in the middle, found the tyre bundle, or go straight ahead and take the clean way. <laughs> Thankfully, he took option three. It was smart thinking on the run. It's a split second decision, and he made it well. And just have a look. Sebastian Bourdais hasn't been dropped off too far. He's right behind Jack Perkins. So again, a very impressive run from the Frenchman. Safety car is out. And Sebastian Bourdais just went straight through the chicane as we were talking about his craft work. So it's a bit of body work here. That's the reason for this. There was a couple of bits on the track yesterday too. Now heaps of people will take the chance to stop here. Oh, big Jack. slide, Jack. Oh. It's actually a bit of his body work. So it's just a little bit of the end off the rear bumper. Oh. Big understeer. And it's wiped it along the tyre belt and uh, just plucked a bit of the door skin, is it? Yeah. Very lucky not to go in the fence there. Very lucky. He'll be disappointed with himself too because he's... I mean, we've been riding with him. He's been doing such a good job preparing for the driver change anyway and that just last minute contact with the wall. So this will be chaos again because they're in the window for the co-driver stop. The, the guy who is coming in is credited with that lap. So lap 34, you must do 34 laps, and here they are. He's in reverse gear in pit lane, which he can't do. Which he may not know the rule in Australia. So he's getting to drive off. He's given up, yeah. So Sebastian Bourdais came in, but both the DJR cars came in at the same time. And by missing his spot, Sebastian Bourdais had to bail out. Oh, there's been a big crash. On the front straight. Yeah. Look at those, but look at all those marks. There's debris everywhere. I mean, look, there's glass and panel damage everywhere along the front straight. The question is, whose car did it come off? Shouldn't be too hard to find. It'll be the car with three wheels on it. It's a big crash. Team BOC, car eight. Look at that, the rear's gone. Well and truly gone. That's just spun because it's just got no brake pedal. Oh. That's Scott Dixon, uh, that and that's Andrew well, Jones. It? Here we go. Oh, he stopped. What oh. has happened there? What has happened there? He stopped on the front straight, and Scott Dixon's had nowhere to go but straight into it. And that, that wheel has been cut loose. In fact, two wheels. Another one went flying down, so one's come off. Car seven as well. The wrong thing to do. Or should they have not been hard up it? They really shouldn't have been hard up it. No one obviously told them where the safety car was. I don't understand what those messages are. Well, Here's Andrew Jones. He's just craw crawling along. And, uh... So maybe Andrew's trying to slow down to find his spot under the safety car. Yeah, Kim Jones bailed me up in pit lane just a minute ago. He said, can we get a look at the car eight? Because they felt 
that the exhaust was wrapped over and it was affecting its performance. So maybe there's part of the drama there. So what we can dig up. Ah, so what they're doing is the exhaust comes out the left-hand side of the car. They've slowed up to drive up near the fence so one of the team guys can have a look at it whilst the safety car has come out thinking that would be OK, everyone's going slow. But everyone was still going fast as the wheel's still rolling along. Everyone was still going fast because they haven't caught the safety car yet. What a bizarre incident. Oh, that was very strange. Never seen anything like it. So Scott Dixon makes heavy contact with the back of car eight. Mark Winterbottom in for car five. Andrew Jones walks away from it. And that'll go down in his book of world's weirdest incidents on a racetrack. Fuel, mate. Reset fuel. It's all solid at the back there. Nothing's going to come loose. All your tyre clearance is good. Okay, so we'll press on.
Andrew second. Jones and Team BOC slowing down on the front straight. We think so. Some of the teammates can take a look at the left-hand side of the car. The result is that Scott Dixon comes flying down the front straight at the same time at regular pace and finds himself with nowhere to go but into the back of the car in front of him. Not only that, concertina into the rear of car 51. So the Castrol car belonging to Greg Murphy and Ivan Muller has major damage to the rear as well. Larko? Hey, check this out, Matty. I've never seen this, mate. There is the rear off car eight. You saw that on the... Uh the pit straight there, look at that. That has plucked that clean off the end of the diff housing. Look at the rim. Look at the damage in the rim here. Quite remarkable. And I've got... Uh, here, just follow me around here, Chris. Um, Kim Jones, we're still trying to... We're scratching our heads a little bit, mate. Um, what went on there? Why was he slowing down so much? Well, there was a safety car out there, Mark, and uh, the rules say that when there's a safety car, you've got to slow down. Uh, obviously, there was somebody behind him that um, hadn't slowed down as much, and I think that when we investigate it and look at it all, it was probably to do with the overlap of the car on the outside and um, and he moved over to not to run up Andrew's bum and then the other car hit him and pushed him into Andrew. But, you know, it's a, it's a safety car and there's always a problem because usually what happens is people race back to the pit exit to try and pass the cars that are in the pits. Um, and, you know, a safety car. All right. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. But Larko, we still don't really know why he was going so slow because everyone else was still doing reasonable pace because you don't slow down properly until they get to the queue or until you've come into pit lane as Kim was just saying so I don't really understand why Andrew was going so slow and then the contact was pretty heavy between the guys still doing pretty much race speed the net result is whatever they were trying didn't work go, go, exactly go. so here we go it's a tight one this one to this restart no big gaps here, so that'll make it interesting. Greg Ritter leads the way, Cam McConville's in there, Andy Prio is part of this as well. Car 47, whoa, and Triple Eight has to cut straight through the chicane. It had that feeling about it, they were all too close at the restart, and the rock racer gets sideways. Alex Tagliani gets tagged on the way through, so Ritter, McConville. That's Sebastian Bourdais for what we saw in pit lane, having to use reverse to try and find his pit bay and then gave up in the end. So as they try and shake it out here around the back straight, this is what traffic does. This is what happens when you can't find clean space on this circuit. When they start as close as they did, it's a guaranteed recipe for disaster somewhere along the list. Andy Prio at turn one on the restart was out of control, couldn't get stopped, and he gave the back of Cam McConville's car a really good hit. Big accident here with Neves and Frank all Kitty. All over, mate. All over. Black up the arm by Todd Kelly. Pushed me straight into Cash and uh, So Steve, Steve Johnson, Johnson, sorry, he's already in that car. Copy, mate. Copy. We can see you. She's got a flat right rear and a fair bit of other stuff. A whole lot of other stuff. So car Safety seven car will be involved in this, Safety according to Stephen Johnson. Here we go. Todd Kelly. Uh, between uh, 13, uh, 12 and 13. Yeah. So it's oh, it's, oh, it's wow. That, that has hit really hard. It's Rick Kelly. It's Rick Kelly in that car. Sorry, it was it was car 15, not car seven. Well, all, all Stevie Johnson saw was the black. This is the restart. Now look at this. Andy Prio's out of control. He's got the wheels locked. He runs straight to the back of Cam McConville. They both go through the chicane and they get down then to turn four. So we always say safety cars breed safety cars. Look at this, good save Cam McConville. That's a really good bit of driving to gather that car up. He should have spun with the level of contact that was made there. Have a look at this. Wheels locked, for the, look for Creo, can't stop. Wheels are locked. Wheels are locked now, bang. Good save. And for a second there, Cam McConville was looking straight at that concrete wall on the left.
been up close, just taking place again down there in the next bit of May's corner. And the GP Racing Falcon and Steve Johnson have an unfortunate retirement now. And the top of the So Greg Ritter is in front of this conga line. Well, okay, that's certainly been dramatic. We know that much. It's actually been pretty good fun. <laughs> Guys, Helio Castroneves back in the garage and a slightly knocked around wrist, but uh, that was pretty wild stuff out there. Yeah, no, um, certainly um, it was my bad, my mistakes. You know, we were the team did a great job in the strategy. Take it, leave me out of there, and all of a sudden um, I just. There was an angry guy behind me. I don't know who the heck was this guy, but you can see he's all over the place. I got distracted and I ended up spinning out. But and then it put me in a very tough spot because we thought that we were going to go out on the lead lap. And unfortunately, uh, um, when I saw that I was right on the danger area, I said, you know, um, let just this guy. This guy raced for the championship. I thought, in fact, I even mentioned to the team, it was like, listen, tell those guys to take it easy. You know, I'll get out of the way. We'll, no problem. But uh, I guess not everybody uh, got the info. So uh, it was sad because somebody pushed me from behind, have no idea. I think it's just mentioned, it's only 50 laps, still 50 laps to go. Whoever took me out or got impatient, I mean, I, it, it damaged his race as well. But I was just trying to get out of the way. It's a shame, feel terrible, because obviously I don't want to hear crash cars. I want to just learn. And Helio, your lap times were good too? Yeah, no, once you was running in the front, you know, you, you kind of like understand what to do. So I felt really, really good. and. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it was just a matter of like just giving a little more time. Uh, it, it was fun. This 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 event is just inf incredible. I'm sure next year is going to be even more fun. Uh, but again, uh, a shame. I want to give a better result to the team uh, uh, Stone Brothers. But uh, Team Slade, a great guy. So hopefully um, next year we'll be back.
what do you think of him, Tim Slade? Because we know he's an up and he's a talented up and coming driver here in Australia. What do you make of him? Has he got the potential? Oh, no question about it. Let me tell you one thing. Uh, uh, certainly, I learned a lot from him. Uh, he's a young star. A lot of t a lot of good drivers pass through Stone Brothers teams and and becoming champions. And uh, I have no doubt that Tim is going to be one of these uh, young champions. Helio, will you come back and do it again next year? Oh, I'd love to. If I have a, if I have another ride, so uh, it would be great. Uh, definitely great strategy, great event. Uh, the Aussies, great. Good job. Thanks, mate. Hey, if he doesn't get a drive, Helio Castro never is. Let's all pitch in and bring him out anyway. Yeah. He's great value. He's been he's great, hasn't he? Yeah. His absolutely. passion is infectious. And I reckon he's sold himself a bit short there in that incident because he's unaware that Rick Kelly gave Stephen Johnson the hurry along. It was a concertina effect. As he said, he was trying to get out of the way, but it's the end of the day for Helio Castro Neves. The restart is underway again. Can this time they get through safely and cleanly? And keep your eye on Dave Reynolds. They started from pit lane, and he's up. Oh, there, almost got a hit then from Tagliani yeah, Will, at turn four. Will Power and Tagliani are arguing the point here. Car six on the right-hand side with power behind the wheel. This has drama written all over it. Somebody's going to have to see before they get to the chicane, and it's Tagliati. Oh, no. It's just got that smell about it. First lap out of the safety car. It's nervous times. They're all jammed together. Courtney right in the battle with Wing Cup right behind him. So Tagliani will know all about V8 Supercar racing in half a lap because Courtney's up the inside at the second last corner. We'll catch for you in a second as McConville puts plenty of pressure on Ritter for the lead. Behind him is Andy Prio, Dave Reynolds, and then this battle, Will Power with Tagliani, Courtney and Wing Cup. So just have a look. Right in the background of shot is Tagliani. Oh. Mistake from Ritter. It's and cost him. He's had to go straight through the chicane. There may have been a little bit of contact under brakes then. So there's Courtney. Tagliani only just makes that. Now this is an important part of the race for James Courtney as he comes up alongside Tagliani. If you effectively take Tagliani out of this picture, you've got Courtney against Wind Cup, the two championship leaders. Now, Wind Cup is eighth on the road, but he's first in the queue of cars to have stopped twice. They stopped on 14 and 34. So he's got an advantage here. I think Ritter's in a bit of trouble. At least Lee Holtzworth can laugh about it. I think he's seen a lot this weekend. Conville is looking very racy. There's Prio with Dave Reynolds right behind him. This is what I thought was a bit of contact. It wasn't contact, was, he did it by himself. So McConville makes it through the chicane. Ritter goes straight through. Now he actually got a little advantage out of that, so that's normally not the case. You're supposed to ensure that you don't get a gain from running straight through the first chicane. So we've got co-drivers in the first five cars. Ritter, McConville, Prio, Reynolds, and Will Power. And have a look how fast Courtney has caught the back of Will Power. Again, Will Power will know all about Viet Supercar Racing in a second when the series leader starts to put some pressure on. This is high stakes. The championship battle between Wing Cup and Courtney in sixth and seventh position in this race. There's James right behind Will Power. Will almost won the IndyCar championship this year, finished second to Dario Franchitti. He's in the FPR Falcon. He's driven very well all weekend. He's certainly been one of the guys that's acclimatised in these cars very well. As we see Ritter, McConville, Prio, Reynolds, Power, Courtney, Wing Cup, all into turn one. Power has a little bit of unfinished business on these streets. Three times he was the pole sitter for the Indy weekend. 
but he didn't claim a race win out of those three. If he could share a race victory with Stephen Richards here, it would be very sweet. And Wing Cup's looking racy too, Matt. He's in a very, very fast first sector. About three tenths of a second faster than any of the others. So you can see the ground that Wing Cup's made. Courtney is being held up a bit by power. And it's a very hard place to pass. So James Courtney will want to set himself up now to get through the first one, two, three complex chicane and put himself in a position to pass Will Power at the hairpin. Oh, lock we're locked there for Power. Very easy to run wide into that armor all fence on the right-hand side. We've seen plenty of cars in there over the weekend. So have a good look for James Courtney's strategy. He's a little bit too far back now. He's got to get a good run through this one, two, three complex and have a dive. He's got to get by. And these guys are aware too of the championship pitcher. Will especially knows that James has the championship oh. lead. No, oh. not quite close enough. He needed to be closer than that. Warren Luff looking on. A good first stint for Warren. Did a good job, led the race. Did 34 laps straight out. And it was a hard 34 laps for all the guys because it was interrupted time and time again by safety cars. One of the things about this circuit is that you can be almost a second faster than the next guy, but it still makes it hard to pass. It's a, it's a such difficult place in terms of these different surfaces, the bumps, the walls obviously are unforgiving. And to get yourself set and to do a really good, safe manoeuvre is hard. So there's been a couple of mistakes, just little ones from Will Power over the last two laps, but still, Courtney can't get around him. There's not a lot of room to move. Ritter leads them down the front straight. McConville is second. Andy Prio, car triple eight is third. Reynolds is fourth. Fastest lap time just posted by Shane Van Gisbergen. 113.86. The young Kiwi's on the charge. We were waiting for it. His co-driver did an excellent job, John McIntyre. This really is game on. Approaching the halfway mark of this 300k event. There was stop, start, stop, start. From the word go with safety cars and damage. But now they've been let loose. And there's little battle packs emerging all over the place. Lee Holtzworth getting ready. So I'll bring in Greg Ritter shortly, you'll say. He's been there since the start. A lot of pressure on, on Greg Ritter there. Cam McConville was right behind him coming onto the straight. A little bit of contact. And again, as you can see, if you can't stay right in the slipstream, you can't make this brake manoeuvre into one. And that then means that you've got to get a run through here, just like James Courtney did there compared to power. And that's Tagliani with a spin. spin out on the last corner. Have to come in this lap, the rear tyres off. That's damage coming onto the straight. Yeah, so he's hit the wall on the exit of turn 15 and he's got damage to the rear right-hand side of the Rock Racer. Watch this. Here we go. Oh, oh he okay. got hit. He's got hit. He got turned around. He's hit the inside wall. <laughs> that was Russell Engel who made contact with Tagliani. That's a welcome to Australia. There's another one for the books. Oh, that's nasty. So we probably need to see a little bit further back to see what the circumstance was there as we pick up on Wing Cup right behind Courtney. So again, this is really game on. This is the championship at stake. And the first three cars with all the co-drivers on board. Hey, Scafi, I don't know if that's just welcome to Australia. I reckon that's welcome to Russell Ingle. What had a look at all those cars yesterday, mate. Stevie Johnson's had the least damage. Who do you reckon had the most? Uh, do I have to have a real guess? What, what car number would it be? Would it be a little bit more than 38, not quite 40? <laughs> Bingo. You win the prize. <laughs> Courtney on power. Good pass. 
Really good pass. And Will Powell, good, good attitude to that too. And Wink Cup come with him. So you like those ones when you get a freebie. And this is a freebie for Jamie Wink Cup. He runs wide, Will Powell coming out of turn 11. And that's the result of constant pressure from Courtney on power. It took about four or five laps in the end, but he eventually forced him into a mistake that opened the door big enough. James Courtney would have wanted the door to shut straight behind him, but Wincup went with him. Exactly. This is a great motor racing battle. It's four co-drivers. Greg Ritter leading this race from Cam McConville, Andy Prio, one of the most accomplished touring car drivers in the world. Young Dave Reynolds in the Bundy Red Commodore in front of the two series contenders. Courtney and Wincup now right behind Reynolds and very fast emerging in the back of screen is Shane Van Gisbergen, and as Matt said a minute ago, on lap 48, did the fastest lap of the race. And Russell, Russell Ingalls, Ingalls has just, just done the fastest lap of the race with a 13.79. So there's pace emerging everywhere. It really is about the only stage of this race where the intensity's been allowed to go up because they've been allowed to get into a rhythm. Rhythm's been so hard to find track space has been so hard to find and the reason that Ingle has got a real pep in his step is that Winterbottom is right behind Winterbottom is only four five tenths of a second behind Russell Ingle and Winterbottom's probably been the fastest guy through the whole weekend so he'll be wanting to go forward based on his speed that he's been able to show and right now Yep, Winterbottom is six tenths of a second behind, so he's right. Oh, look at this. I'll tell you, we'll be good. having quite a few looks in the mirror. Here will be David Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> because James Courtney is climbing all over the back of car 24. Ritter and McConville, one and two. Prio, solid in third. There's David Reynolds. So Courtney has a look at the inside at four and will sneak through. And Wing Cup's going to go again. Wing Cup's loving this. Wing Cup says every time that James dives down there, but it's not done. Not over yet. He'll get away with it. And Dave, good maturity there from Dave Reynolds to not go on with that there. It's, it's ugly. You can't get in there. And there's Van Gisbergen right behind. He's made a lot of ground. Fastest lap of the race, 13.58. So he's looking pretty strong. In fact, the three guys from a strategy standpoint who look strongest are Courtney, Winkup, and Van Gisbergen based on the stopping time when the next stop takes place for how much fuel they will require to top these cars up. So Van Gisbergen right behind Dave Reynolds. A lot of movement up and down pit lane in terms of the regular drivers getting their helmets on and getting ready to race. We can expect to see a change of car 33 very soon. Lee Holdsworth standing by to take over from Greg Ritter. Check out Andy Prio on the podium with Craig Lowndes yesterday. And now he's giving some pressure to Cam McConville. So this is on board with Dave Reynolds. Shane Van Gisbergen has been strong through the weekend. He's driven very well the whole year. This is the fast chicane. This is the Tebow helicopter shot. That was the wall profile that had changed on the left-hand side from the earlier David Brabham, Cam McConville incident. Hit the fence very hard. And this is now down to turn 12. This is the northern end of the track through seven mates, down to the last two corners. Jamie Wincup showing good pace. Even with all this traffic, he was fastest to the second sector, the fastest time all day to the second sector. McConville's reporting a long brake pedal in car two because of the hot air that he's sucking into the front of that car. The long brake pedal means the, the pedal's traveling too far for his liking and he's stuck right under the back of Ritter, who will be in soon. And James Courtney has been trying to release himself from Jamie Wincup in the process. What he's done is he's caught up to car 888. So he's now got a team Vodafone double act going on in front and behind him. So he's got Andy Prio ahead and Jamie Wincup behind. 
The important thing is, over the last lap or so, relatively speaking, Wind Cup has been faster than Courtney. And when Neil was talking about the long brake pedal for Cam McConville, what happens is, oh, and Courtney has a little look down the inside. Turn 11 with Andy Creo. This could get ugly. They'll need to fix a bit of this because the potential for drama is going to unfold. Right on the back of that 888 car. What Neil was talking about with Cam McConville is that the front brake temperatures increase because the car doesn't get any airflow into the brake ducts. So you get the heat soak from the car in front. You don't have the airflow. The rotor temperature, the brake rotor temperature increases. The brake pads fade, so their coefficient of friction at some ridiculous temperature like 900 degrees actually goes off. And the brake fluid boils. So the, the, the pressure that you apply on the brake makes the brake pedal feel... Oh, Contact. there's Winkoff into the back of Courtney. Contact at turn four, the two series contenders. And he redresses, he redresses. Wow, that could have been whew, a whole lot worse. I think that so, was a very smart call on Jamie's yep. part. Clever play by Jamie Wincup. He's given him a bump. He was ready him sideways, attack. got alongside, took the position, but then gave the position away. They're bringing car triple eight in this lap. Here he is again in replay. They'll bring nine in as well. So he wasn't quite up far enough. Oh. Makes contact, pushes Courtney wide makes the pass give him his due because you know he, he thought look this could be light ball don't need to argue about it with officialdom later i'll fix it myself so very smart got almost 50 laps to go so courtney will know the guys will be telling oh again this is good policy to bring him in and he's in so a little bumping duel courtney straight in van gisbergen in behind this is going to be very hectic. Done a lot of damage, that's not good. Not good. So we're in this reverse oh, yeah, window gone, now. Man. From lap 57 onwards, this is 57 right now. This should fuel them to the end. Lead drivers will be in these cars. Anybody that hasn't got a lead driver in will be doing the driver change. This Garth Tanner getting in. Andy Prio out, Craig Lowndes in. Prio. Jumped out and had a look at the back of car triple eight. He can't believe it. He's yeah, what's going on there? And that was because first of you when you can, please, first gear. Because Get of the contact. Out here. They got the wheel just there. With car 18 on approach. Just waiting on fuel. Good. Good to go. Still clear. And they've jumped them. So Lounge jumps tender. Do as good as you can. Tires all red, cold tires all red. Need to push, push, push. Should be a clear track. Who's 18? So, where is James Courtney? He's down around turn five. He's heading up the back straight. So the driver change must have been longer than fuel. We'll work this out for you, folks. We'll come back to you with what's going on there. So you, we need to get our brain around how that's unfolded. There's James Courtney. Van Gisbergen. So Courtney and Van Gisbergen have spent less time in pit lane because they stopped later, yeah. lap 34, so they didn't need to fill. But that's what we were saying before the stop, that Courtney, Winkup and Van Gisbergen were going to be best off based on the strategy. So Courtney didn't have to stop for as long, nor did they have to do a driver change. So James Courtney's track position now has been optimised by that strategy. Okay, mate, we've got a clear track. Head down, please. Clear track ahead, so big, big lap. So it takes a lot less time to return the car to a full fuel load, given that they had the 18 car in on lap 34. Oh, Courtney in the fence. It's not a good start to a stint. Lucky he got, actually, he probably didn't even need reverse, because it bounced back in, bounced back out, dipped the clutch. Now that's eventful stuff. That's the damage that's on the front. That's why there was so much damage. Wind cup in to pit lane. Oh, that's Garth Tander stopped. Garth Tander stopped and it looks like a lot of damage. A lot of damage, massive damage. Just blocked. Wouldn't turn, had to try and get in front of that GRM car. 
That's a huge amount of damage to Garth Tander's car. At turn one chicane, he's gone in the fence and the left-hand side front. Safety car out now. And that's Wing Cup in for the stop. Will Powers also in. Leader is car five, car five the main on the So we'll have a look at this. This is Garth Tander trying to get by the GRM car, won't turn, and straight in. Oh, that has made very heavy contact. And that would hurt. That one would physically hurt. Have a look, this is on board. Oh, that is a big hit. Garth Tander on relatively cold tyres. And the reason that happens is you see a car in pit lane coming out, you need to be super deep under brakes to get across the front. Now watch Garth in this. Look at the Look at movement head. in the driver. Wow, that's taken an almighty chunk out of that tall HRT Commodore, but it's a teeth rattler for Garth Tander as well. He radioed back that he was OK. I reckon he'll be feeling it later tonight, though. Oh, see, this is the circumstance. You've got to get by. So the reason he was so deep under brakes is to get by the Fujitsu car. And then with cold tyres, you can't get the car turned. This is Garth now, just getting out of the HRT car. Jamie Wincup is the race leader from Shane Van Gisbergen and James Courtney now that it's all been sorted out in pit lane. So check in for the mother highlights and car 33 was one of the big losers from the start of this race. So too was car 14. It was a heartbreaking retirement for Elaine Menu and Jason Bright in the trading post entry. That wasn't going anywhere. Big impact for David Brabham into the wall up on the back straight. Massive damage to that. Thankfully, he was OK, but don't need to be Einstein to work out. The car wasn't. Jack Villeneuve down at turn four, getting a bit sideways. And this was quite bizarre. 
Car six came in, but Will Power wasn't ready, and then it just turned into an almighty traffic jam. The HRT cars were stacked. Team Vodafone couldn't get out because the Fujitsu cars were stacked. Sebastian Bourdais missed all that. Then car eight slowed down under safety car, but too slow. Scott Dixon had nowhere to go and slammed into him in the front straight. It chewed off two wheels, one from car eight and one from the Jack Daniels racer. Bizarre moments. Andy Prio and car triple eight on the restart. The restart bred another restart. Camber Conville was lucky to get away there and this big impact for Stephen Johnson and Elio Castro Neves with Rick Kelly involved in that as well. So chaos and carnage all over the place. Wing Cup and Courtney have been having a really good battle. Now Wing Cup got past there but then redressed his move because he knew that he would get penalised and that's the one. That's the really big one. And Garth Tanner will be taking quite a few deep breaths. Watch his head. Gee, that's big impact. And it's no wonder that he walks away gingerly. Squeeze all that into a minute, an hour and a half worth of racing. Oh, talk about getting your value for your money around here. And almost 60,000 people again today have uh, witnessed just an extraordinary arm wrestle. A total of 170,000 people have come to watch the Armour All Gold Coast 600. So, Wing Cup is at the front. He didn't have to spend too long in pit lane at his stop. When he rejoined, it puts him out ahead of Shane Van Gisbergen. James Courtney is in third. Paul Dumbrell's fourth. Then Rick Kelly, Mark Winterbottom, Tony Dalberto into the 10. Russell Ingalls there. Down at turn four, Will Davison and Ingle. And Will might get the job done there to go up into eighth spot. That's not over. That one there might continue. And Will does get just down the inside of Russell Ingle. Great shot on the streets of the Gold Coast. This is the northern end, as we've said before. And Jamie Winkup trying to make some ground on the championship leader in third position. So leading this race from Van Gisbergen, that's Courtney, Paul Dumbrell, Rick Kelly, Mark Winterbottom, Tony Delberto, Will Davison, Russell Ingle and Craig Lowndes to the top ten after restart six of 102 laps. There's Craig Lowndes, Dean Fiore right behind him and Greg Murphy with a good solid run in 12th. A lot of damage to the back of that car we saw earlier. This is the restart with, oh, contact there. That's, I think that was Mark Winterbottom into the back of Rick Kelly. Yep. And this is a real speed race now where these are the three fastest guys through the day, excluding Mark Winterbottom. And they're gonna have to turn some laps on to sneak away from the rest. This is starting to get to the business end of this race. 40 laps to go. They will want to go and do a really good job. Centaur Racing, worth making a note of here, into the top 10. Car 3 started in 18th and Dalberto now finds himself in 7th. So Dumbrell, good fight back. Rick Kelly was involved in all that drama there before with Steve Johnson. And got a little bit of damage front and rear, but he looks all right. You see the car, a bit of tape on the left-hand front corner. And Winterbottom, as I said, was been very quick all weekend and he's a guy just to keep an eye on. Shane Van Gisbergen. This race has got all the hallmarks of delivering Shane Van Gisbergen his first V8 supercar race win. The car's fast. He's chasing down Jamie Wincup. He's going to get a lot of pressure from James Courtney, so he's going to get a hurry along from in front and behind, and you can be dead set certain that he's going to give it everything he's got. He will throw it all at a race win. There's the garage, just Roland Dane and the Stone Brothers garage below, looking on intently. This is a very serious 
part of this race right now. As I said, they want to go and do a really good job in terms of speed and good solid laps. They're pulling away from Paul Dumbrell. It's Will Davison with a good fight back. They've done a good job today to now be into eighth position in front of Ingle. Pulling up behind Dalberto. There's the door missing completely and all that door skin after we saw the Jack Perkins tyre rub coming out of turn 13. Hit the tyre barrier and pulled the door skin off that car. So, a little look up the inside there for Winterbottom. Remember, this started way back at the restart. When Winterbottom was nudging car 15. And a new fastest lap of the race for Michael Caruso on lap 65. A 1.13.4.0. So that's about a tenth and a half faster than anybody else has gone. We've said all day that his race speed has been good, but he is way down in 18th position. So now we'll see Winterbottom take some ground off Paul Dumbrell. James Courtney has now done the fastest second sector of the race. So as I said, the speed is really on. James has just, he's just sneaking up onto the back of Van Gisbergen and Van Gisbergen's taken ground off Wink Up on this lap. Jamie Wink Up's 101 points behind James Courtney on the championship ladder. He's won eight races this season. Courtney has won four races this season. Van Gisbergen's never won a V8 race in his young but so far spectacular career, the youngest full-time driver in the series. 21 years of age. And Van Gisbergen's looking speedy. Gee, Garth Tanner, it's been a tough day out there. Firstly, you OK? Yeah, mate, I'm fine. Um, it was a reasonable hit, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm OK. So uh, it's a shame for the guys. They didn't deserve that. They've been working their backsides off after Bathurst, and um, we had a good result yesterday, obviously. And, my mistake today, just went in too hot on cold tyres and couldn't turn the car, just trying to get around a couple of guys that were coming out of pit lane and and just couldn't stop it in time and into the wall. So, um, you know, the car's pretty hurt, so the guys are going to have to work hard again before Simmons Plains, which is disappointing, but, um, you know, we'll go there and bounce back. Rest up, GT. Thanks, Will. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. There's the replay of Garth Tander, and Garth being very honest with his appraisal of what had happened there. It's obviously a disappointing result for him after a great win yesterday, and the damage with Fabian Coulthard's car and Will Davison's car from Bathurst. A lot of damaged cars in that garage now. Singer replay will unfold 
how Winterbottom got past Paul Dumbrell. Teammates have been very nice to each other today, Matthew. That was a yes, you can go through from Paul Dumbrell. And a good pass. Mark Winterbottom, really good speed. And this is really on. We'll give you the lap times to show you the intensity of these first four cars. Jamie Winkup's about to cross the line. And Winkup does a 13-4. Van Gisberg a 13-5. Courtney a 13-4. And Winterbottom a 13-2. So there's your first four cars within two tenths of a second. Isn't it amazing? For a while there, we were scratching our heads, wondering if anybody would get to the finish of this race. It just looked as though it was uh, never going to settle down. And once it did, the cream has certainly risen to the top. And the professionalism of these drivers, the pace of these drivers, and the sheer skill of these drivers is now on full show. I've got to tell you, James Courtney could not have got any closer that, that, that fence. to that wall. Exactly. In and fact, he may have left a little bit of paint behind, but it didn't upset him too much. So Winterbottom's joined the battle, or should join the battle pretty soon. Dumbrell's holding on, and Tony Dalberto is also in the mix. He's tucked behind Rick Kelly, but there's something else to throw up. And I'm not talking high-rises, I'm talking what's behind it, what's lurking. Could we have a shower? <laughs> we don't want a shower, man. We do not want rain. Safety car will win this race if it rains. Here's Wing Cup leading from Van Gisbergen. This is our TiVo chopper shot of the weather coming in. Now, the bit that we're looking at is down on the ah, southern end. Looks fine. Over, over to the southwest. Now, on this lap, they were all basically within a tenth of a second. Winterbottom probably is the fastest car. He's just, you can just see him in the back of the shot there, and he's just making some ground. But I can't stress enough how tough these laps are. They're like qualifying laps. The tyres aren't good. The brakes are ordinary. You're not feeling as fresh as you were at the start. You can't make a mistake, but you've got to be fast. And in lap 72 of 102, only 30 laps to go, you've got to do the very best job. And it's, it, this is an unforgiving racetrack. We've seen it all day. Well, on lap 71, Shane Van Gisbergen posted his fastest ever time and the second fastest ever time around this circuit. Check in on the stats of Mark Winterbottom. More than 200 races in V8 supercars. He added to that impressive list of uh, pole positions. He's now up to 15 after claiming pole this morning. And remember, he's the defending Gold Coast champion. Won the overall event last year. Hey guys, I just want to show you a little bit about how a guy like Garth Tand gets away with a shunt like that. When it's predominantly frontal, what happens, you see these guys have got a thing called a hands device. This is this device here, and what it does, look, it tethers to the helmet, okay? So when you put this over your shoulders, your seat belts come over the top, so in a frontal, you can see there's some head movement, but a great safety device, a great saver. Yeah, really, that, that has been a remarkable uh, development over a long period of time. In the last three or four years, it's been compulsory for us to use it. It was originally made for American racing, and in touring cars, we're one of the first categories. The German Touring Car Championship, the DTM, had it first, and we then started using it here, as I said, as a compulsory item. And it basically, as Mark explained, those tethers restrict the helmet from going too far forward and the head and neck injuries in some of those incidents, like we saw with Garth Tander, have been dramatically reduced. So here we go. So there's Wink Cup, there's Van Gisberg and Courtney, Winterbottom, Dumbrell, Rick Kelly, right behind him, Dalberto doing a really good job. Will Davison, Russell Ingle, Craig Lowndes, Right behind there is Lee Holdsworth, then Greg Murphy, then Jonathan Webb, then Steve Richards, Fabian, Fabian Coulthard, Michael Caruso, Dean Fiore, Dale Wood, that's the 
Slade car going through there, but that's not for position. And then Jason Barguana. There's Tony Ricciardello. And on board at the moment, that is Dale Wood in car 16. So back to the front. We see this intense battle, and I'll just do the times for you again because I, I can't reiterate how important this is and how close this battle is. 13-3-7 for Winker. 13-3-7 for Van Gisbergen. 13-6-4 for Courtney. 13-4-5 for Winterbottom. There is nothing in this race. The speed is incredible. Less than three one-hundredths of a second separated Jamie Wincup and Van Gisbergen on that last lap. And this is their 75th lap of the day. It's been a long day, a long weekend for them. It says a lot for the teamwork as well, because almost every single car up and down pit lane has, has had some sort of damage done to it. So they've pieced them together, they've made them go the distance. And now the drivers are being taken to their limits as well. Tony Dalberto, Tiago Montero did a great job earlier. They had to weave their way through the field. And they've made up 11 positions. His partner's an ex-Formula One driver, 37 starts in the Premier category. Tiago Montero from Portugal. Tony Dalberto drove with Shane Price in the uh, Enduros. Phillip Island and Bathurst. And back we go to James Courtney. So on board, let's have a little look how hard these guys work and as intense as this battle is for the lead of this race and for the championship, we're on board now with the series leader. Just have a look at how hard they work around the streets of the Gold Coast. So that's a lap with James Courtney. Now just have a look. Neil made the comment yesterday about the sun in this time of the afternoon. Have a look at this when you turn left. You can't, you can't see a thing. So as the screen gets worse and the afternoon sun comes in on the streets there, when you turn left, you actually lose the wall. You can't see the wall momentarily.
James Courtney is third, Mark Winterbottom is fourth. There's the gap looking back from first to second. The last few laps have been eventful for James Courtney. He has had contact with the wall only slightly up at uh, the exit of turn 11. So, well, we can check it out here on a Zinger replay. This will show us Will Davison getting past Tony Delberto. And Will goes up into seventh position. So, Wind Cup continues to lead from the front. Van Gisbergen hasn't let him go. The only bloke to have blinked out of these three has been Courtney. And, and that's it was that, that turn right there, exactly. On the way out of turn 11. So we've sort of got two battles. There's four cars battling for the lead. Van Gisbergen looks pretty racy, so he's right in behind Wink Cup, and the last couple of laps has looked strong. We'll give you their lap times in a second. Then there's a great battle from sixth through to tenth. And this is Jonathan Webb on the inside of Murphy and turns Greg Murphy around. Like, seriously, those sorts of incidents, we've just seen them all weekend, they're very ordinary. So, lap time, 13.54 for Wink Cup, 13.57 for Van Gisbergen, 13.60 for Courtney. So six hundredths of a second separate the first three cars lap time. So, again, the intensity is very, very high. But from Rick Kelly, Will Davison, Tony Dalberto, Russell Lingle, Craig Lowndes, this battle from 6th through to 10th is the next battle that is really heating up also. What a shot, eh? Isn't it a great shot? Main Beach in the foreground. Car screaming along. After zigzagging the chicane. That's why the world loves coming here to watch motor, motor racing. On uh, surface paradise, uh, this is James Courtney where he tagged the wall. He didn't. <laughs> He's teasing us. In terms of championship, Mark, this is the deal. James Courtney came here with a 125-point advantage over Jamie Winker. By yesterday afternoon, that had dropped down to 101 points. Right now, it's only 80 points. There's the gap. 2-5-3-0 plays 2-4-5-0. In current championship points that includes their standings in this race. So if it finished right now, Jamie Winkup is pulling himself closer and closer towards James Courtney in the fight for the 2010 series title. And there's 900 points remaining. So lots of racing, lots of drama to play out, especially as we get down to our Sydney event on the streets of, of Sydney Olympic Park. So the little battle that we were talking about before was just there, it's raging with Kelly Davison, Dalberto, Ingle and Lowndes. And this is on board now with James Courtney, right up behind Van Giersbergen. Isn't that extraordinary? This afternoon sun, and you spoke about it before, it's a pure blind spot. Blinds you, absolutely. I mean, it's hard enough to see out of the cockpit of these cars anyway. There's only the tiniest window to look out through with the roll cage through there. And look, sweat in his eyes. I mean, it couldn't get any more uncomfortable or harder. And then you throw in blinding sun as well. It's for all of these drivers at this stage. They're super fit, but they've been pushed to the limit here. It doesn't get any harder than this one. And Courtney's just turned up the heat. 13.5 second. Oh. Car 19, a driving infringement. That was for the contact with Greg Murphy, so that'll be a pit lane penalty. So on the last lap, Wink Cup and Van Gisbergen was a 13.54 and a 13.57, but a 13.38 for Courtney, so he took some ground off them. There's Mark Winterbottom. He was slightly slower, and he hasn't made any more ground. So again, that's out of the front of Wink Cup spot. That's that blinding light out of turn 11. This is 11, 12, 13 now. That's the big incident that we saw Elio and Steve Johnson caught up in a little while ago. And look at these numbers, 0.064. There's nothing in these lap times between these guys. Great driving, mate, keep it up. And when you see the view out of the windscreen there, it's probably not a bad idea to be 
stuck behind somebody in this little race with 19, 18 laps to go. Because Shane Van Gisbergen, around that part of the circuit, would simply be following Jamie Wincup. And Wincup is a pioneer through there, but he's a proven front runner. You don't win the amount of races and championships that he's won without being able to win him from any position. And especially here, remember 2008, he started the weekend with pole, and then he blew the rest of the field away with three races that weekend. He led from wire to wire. So he knows this circuit. He knows the afternoon sun. He's been in this situation before. And he's had maximum pressure put on him. He's a very, very good leader, Matt. I mean, if you go through all of the abilities and all of the things that you look at in terms of driver credentials, he's basically done it all. He's a great qualifier. He's a great starter. But one of his real, look at that, how close is that, Van Gisbergen, right behind Wink up at the final corner. But one of the great things he does is he leads very well. And it's hard to lead these sorts of races. As you said, you're the pioneer, and you're basically guiding the speed of this race. What he's doing at the moment are flat out laps and the other guys are going with him. And sometimes that can be a bit soul destroying because when you're trying so hard and you're putting the absolute maximum effort in and taking very big risks on every lap, basically every corner, and you're not getting away from the bloke behind, it's easy to make a mistake under that scenario. So he's a very, very good leader and Van Gisbergen is working him hard. Well, last time around, there was a two tenths of a second difference. Wing Cup was two tenths of a second slower than Van Gisbergen and Courtney. And Van Gisbergen knows it. He can sense it. If he's gonna make a move, he's gonna have to do it soon. And the difference is, we know how close again was Courtney to that event. He keeps doing it to us. And look how intense Ross Stone is in the foreground, looking on, he's making comments to the rest of the engineers. What we've got are two blokes, Jamie Winkup and James Courtney, who care about the championship like you can't believe. But one bloke in the middle of this battle is only thinking about today. He's not in the championship battle. He wants to win this race. He wants to win. He wants to win his first ever race. And again, Win Cup is the slowest of the three. So he's got 114.04. Van Gisbergen, 113.96. Courtney, 113.91. And the tyre, look, he's giving him a nudge. Him. He's giving him a nudge. The intentions couldn't be clearer from Van Gisbergen. Winkup takes a look down. Adjusting the bars. So Jamie Winkup is going in search of more stability in this car. The speed's gone away from him just a touch. In fact, the speed of the group has gone away because they were doing low 13s. They're now in high 13s, early 14s. So as they work these tyres and brakes very hard, they go away, they degrade. On board now with Jamie looking at him, concentration levels are so high. The risks are so high. It's so unforgiving. The smallest mistake, we've seen it all day, we've seen it all weekend. The smallest mistake, you pay a very big price here. Mark Dutton talking to Jamie. Guiding him along. Keep it up, mate. Keep it up, mate. And he responded there. He was a tenth of a second quicker than Van Gisbergen that time around. Can you imagine being asked at this stage of the race, at this stage of the weekend, this race has been going for over two hours now. Quick check further back through the field of Craig Lowndes and Lee Holdsworth. Lounge is seriously, he's real drama. The rear tyres are in really bad order. You see that big slide that he had out of the final corner and Lee Holdsworth goes past. So I was about to say before that raging battle from 6th through to 10th, Holdsworth was starting to gain on those guys and clearly now has rounded Craig Lounge up.
Winterbottom tucked in in fourth. Zing a replay of a nervous moment for Stone Brothers Racing. There's the young Kiwi. Just got it wrong on the entry to the chicane. He pulled it up though. So nothing really to worry about there. And we will take this one to the finish. This is a really good battle, and Winterbottom has definitely come up onto the back of those guys. And Courtney's joined it too. He's closed the gap too. Courtney just gave the wall another bump in that spot. We, at the end of the day, we'll go and talk to him out of turn 11. Yeah, mate, 11 to go. Great driving. We're almost at the run home, buddy. It's Mark Dutton just encouraging Jamie Winkup, but this is the spot we're talking about. That's Steve. Actually, it's uh, Steve Richards. Steve yeah. Richards knocking the mirror and stuff off. That's pretty heavy contact, but James has just been bumping it gently. We just yep. can't take your eyes off this. Look at Mark Winterbottom. He's oh. really joining this battle. So there's 11 laps to go here, and Winterbottom is the master at uh, pulling the rabbit out of the hat late. And if he can just sneak up a little bit closer to James Courtney, it'll put him in this picture as well. And those little green boxes on the bottom of our screen tell the story of why. He's been faster than car 18 four out of the last five times around. And I can't stress enough, I keep saying it, please bear with me, but this is, this has been a war around these streets over the weekend. The level of damage I have not seen ever and the sort of extreme stuff that's gone on. But at the end of the day, Four of the very best drivers in the field in four different teams are absolutely battling for the win. That's the other thing into the mix. There's lap traffic here. So they have to deal with just something else. And those statistics of Jamie Winkup are just simply extraordinary. 41 wins out of 200 starts. His strike rate's just been so impressive, especially over the last two years. Shane Van Gisbergen, just 21 years of age, 99 races. The one thing missing so far from his CV is a race win. So that's what's at stake. This will be very good for him, Matt. I mean, this is a very high-level performance from him today. This is one of his best drives. McIntyre drove well early. He's driven really well in this race. And you can't, this can't be any higher level than this around the streets. With, there, you, there you go, there was Courtney giving that fence a bump again. It's like a guy. But he's driven very well, and I think Courtney's actually in a little bit of trouble now because Winterbottom's come right up to him. Winterbottom's well and truly caught him. He's, he's not the lone ranger down at turn 11 whacking that wall. And he's got so used to it now, like you say, he's using it as a touch guide. Oh, tap Big wheel spin. Going. So this is the view from the front of the FPR car, now the view from the rear of car 18. That shows you how close they are. Meanwhile, out in front, it's only two tenths of a second difference between Win Cup and Van Gisbergen. And this battle here will help these two because Winterbottom should get past Courtney here and does so. There's no point James Courtney getting involved in any tangle there and losing a bucket load of points, a lot of points. Right now, he's just waiting for the finish. He wants to get there comfortably. 
It's going to put another little dent in his championship lead. But if you start making contact at this stage of the race, the championship lead could evaporate altogether. And what it's done, it's left just over that last lap, it's left Winkup and Van Gisbergen to go hard at it together. So Van Gisbergen doesn't have any stress at the moment from Courtney. Let's just have a look at this pass. The Zinger replay picks up on Mark Winterbottom straight down the inside. And James Courtney, really, I mean, the maturity, I've said it a lot of times this year, that the maturity that James is showing this season is championship winning. Go, mate. Eight, eight to go. Get that third split straight. Right, mate. Great driving. It's Mark Dutton again encouraging Jamie to get to the end of this race. These are important races in the championship contention. Well, sorry, Matty, I just had a little wheel lock then because there was, I looked in the background and I thought that James Courtney had a drummer, but he didn't. But he clearly, for speed now, Van Gisbergen again tapping the back of Winkup's car. So Winterbottom gaining and Courtney is out of it. That little move from Mark Winterbottom on Courtney has cost James Courtney another nine points yep. in his championship battle. So the gap now is 71 points between Courtney and Wincup. But the battle for Wincup is not with Courtney right now, it's with this young Kiwi who will not let go like a dog with a bone on the back of car one. This is gonna go right down to the wire. Can you believe it? 600 kilometers of racing across this weekend. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage. Panels everywhere. The internationals have had a crack, and at the end of the day, we have the defending series champion fighting off the youngest full time driver. And a split hair between them. Van Gisbergen, he can taste his first V8 supercar win. Winkup will certainly not give it to him on a plate. Oh, here we go. Down to turn four. Does he get him here? He's going to slide into it side by side. And they're going to drag race oh. it up there. They continue the argument. But he didn't need to do that, Matt. He didn't need to make yeah, contact mate, late. Get back into it. Get back into rhythm. You'll get him again. We've got time. Keep cool, buddy. Van Gisbergen gets counselling. I think it's made, I think it's hurt the right-hand front. Well, it's brought Winterbottom into the argument as well. But he didn't need to do the last bit. It was a great dive. Jamie gave him some room. They both got round there with minor contact. They both slid the car out of the corner and then they were going to buy for position at turn five. But let's look at this. Great move, both sideways. In they go, a little rub. Now this bit's totally fine. They come out of there together, but the next bit, that bit there, you don't have to do. So that little bit of right hand front and left hand rear contact has just, here we go. So, the, and the guys are encouraging him. The guys from SBR are saying, there's the contact, you can see the steering wheel movement there from Wink Cup. Look at him at Stone Brothers. I thought they had it, thought they had it, almost lost it. Oh. And the guys are saying, he's got a championship to think about. Let's keep the pressure on him, let's keep the pressure on him. This is intense motor racing. On lap 97 out of 102. What about car five is the biggest smokey here? He's well, not out of it, not out of it at all. Mark Winterbottom could well and truly land a race win here if the two cars in front of him come unstuck again. Not only that, Winterbottom's got good pace. This is extraordinary stuff at this stage of a Sunday afternoon. Win Cup level-headed. Van Gisbergen trying to get the temperature back down. Trying to find that rhythm again that he had so well. Winterbottom waiting to pounce. And now it's back on. And the Stone Brothers have not won a race since James Courtney in 2008. So that's why they're so keen. In that garage, they are, they are doing everything they can possibly do to get young Shane Van Gisbergen encouraged and by Jamie Wickham. This is fantastic stuff. The bloke with the best seat in the house is James Courtney. He's sitting back there saying, these blokes are playing for keeps. Look at this. Gives him another bump. This is just fantastic. And have a look how close Winterbottom is now. Well, that's what Van Gisbergen's got in his mirror. He's got car five 
climbing all over him. And if I was Jamie Winkup, I'd be saying, go, Mark Winterbottom, go! <laughs> as much pressure as you can put on Van Gisberg, and it helps me. Go, Frosty. When does this young Kiwi have another crack? It's the same spot. It's turn four for sure, and he's got to get the car through the one, two, three chicane. Wink Cup got wide then, and he lost some ground. So this works into the hands of Van Gisbergen. He can't be any closer coming onto the straight. The whole strategy is about being deep under brakes at the next section, have good car position, and then dive down the inside at turn four. Have a look, this is the first part of this strategy. Make the ground now, get a run through here. Keep the flow up. Keep the flow up, that's the spot. Have a look. Oh my God, he's so close. He's so deep. He went deep into the chicane. He went deep into turn four. And Winkup somehow continues to keep his cool. That may have been Shane Van Gisbergen's best opportunity then. He was right there. And sometimes the go is, Matt, what you do is you fake. So you basically say, no, I won't do that, I won't do that. Then the next time, have a big dive, a big dive bomb dive. And he's going to have to be bold because you won't get up the inside there and make an effective pass if you don't have that sort of dive. Oh! Frosty almost gave the fence a hit. He did, actually, in the same spot that we saw Jack Perkins. He just hit those tyres on the way out of 13. Shane Van Gisbergen has finished seventh. Uh, third, seven times this, this season. He won't be happy with second, I can tell you, after this battle. He wants that first spot. And the radio contact then was concentrate, mate, concentrate. He can't concentrate any harder than this. Whoops. Oh. That's a little mistake. And that'll bring Winterbottom again closer to him. Now he knows that when you do that, you can't make the pass. So you've definitely got to make the chicane. So he can't make that mistake again. To win this race, you've got to make the first chicane. Running out of laps, running out of time. He's not running out of inspiration, that's for sure. Two things will come from this race. If Wink Up wins, we know what, he's, what it's done in the series, and this is a championship-changing day for Wink Up. It will be an extraordinary race for him. If Van Gisbergen can get by, then we know from Stone Brothers and from young Shane's perspective, be one of the great days for that team and this young guy from New Zealand. We've been saying for quite a while, and we've seen it on various racetracks around the world, that Shane Van Gisbergen is a star in the making. This is a superstar drive, and he can stamp it with victory against Wing Cup if he can pull him in. New Zealanders are saying that this is the best kid since Jim Richards, so it's a big, a big, big rap. And again, he's just dropped a little bit of time on Jamie Winkup out of the final corner. He missed a gear change then, and that gave Winkup a little breather. And also probably just thinking twice oh, going to Jamie that chicane. Oh, a little mistake. Well, if, if he was close, he would have been there. And he's been so close. He's been fingernail close. He's been tapping Wing Cup around turn four the last three times. On the one time that Wing Cup goes wide, he's not close enough to make it stick. He didn't capitalise because he'd lost that little bit of ground down the straight. He missed a gear change. It was two or three car lengths. And the only mistake that we've seen Jamie Wing Cup make, he got away with it. Wink up will be saying to himself in that car now, I can't make that mistake again. I've got to make sure that I make every apex. I make every brake marker. Van Gisberg going to be saying, gee, I hope Jamie makes that mistake again. Oh, exactly. And I'm going to be there when he does. And I'm going to help him like that. I'm going to help him make that mistake. He's up the inside. You want to, don't make contact now. Yo, don't yo, make contact. Down the front straight. He's got him. It's a duel for the lead. Wink up versus... Van Gisbergen, the Kiwi, against the defending series champion. This is an almighty dive into the chicane. Oh! And they make contact. Both of them go through and car number one pops out in front. It's not done with yet at turn four. Van Gisbergen keeps yeah, going. Go for it. Keeps pushing. Go to reserve, go to reserve too, please. They've got nothing left in the tank. Go to reserve, keep it in front, but go to reserve. Great driving, great driving. Unbelievable, just incredible racing at max.
maximum speed. <laughs> I have not seen a better closing stage of a race for a long time. As Van Gisbergen has a little look. The way he's going, it's Van Gisbergen all or nothing. Lap, mate, just in case you weren't sure. This is the last lap. There will be a dive. This really is an all or nothing approach from the young Kiwi. And the only thing you can do is give him a serve. He'll bump him here. He'll bump him, run him wide. He can't do it. Wind Cup's going to hold on. Wind Cup has fought off an extraordinary battle and he takes victory in a race to remember. What a race. Great work, boys. Holy smoke. Unbelievable. I reckon I could seriously say I've seen it all now. It was an absolute war for two days on the streets of the Gold Coast, and it comes down to this. A battle like you cannot believe between the young bloke of New Zealand and the series champion. What about round the back? What about round the back straight? <laughs> While he's trying to put a move, they're side by side rubbing panels. And Shane Van Gisbergen is getting encouragement on the radio. Go, give it to him. <laughs> Just unbelievable. There might be a little bit of drama still to play out of this, you know, because they both ran through there. And at the time of, the, of that part of the corner, Van Gisbergen was actually in the lead. So as you come through there, both guys are not credited with it. And they run to the next section of road with Jamie in the lead. So there could be a bit of controversy after this. There'll be a bit of drama in the back of pit lane. So Mark Dutton saying, no, that's fine. That's fine. So, And also congratulations, of course, go to Steve Owen. Jamie Winkup should be on the line. Jamie, it's Matty White here. Have you got any energy? Have you got anything left to say? Uh, mate, that was pretty loose at the end there, but uh, great battle. I was out of time, just, I ain't got nothing left in the back of this, so, uh, yeah, no, awesome, mate. I, we had a shocker yesterday, and the fight back today for the win was huge. Jamie, I've got to tell you, that was one of the most extraordinary sporting moments I think we've witnessed in years. For the way that you held off Shane Van Gisbergen was just something to remember. Have you ever found yourself in that kind of battle with that kind of intensity before? Uh, mate, yeah. Um, to be honest, GT did it to me a couple of years ago, but uh, that was certainly intense, you know. So, so happy we, we fought hard and to come back. It's championship time, it's on. It certainly is on. Well, you've closed the gap to about 71 points now to uh, James Courtney. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Thanks, boys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> and all you can do really at the end of the day is laugh. I mean, remember, this race is going around the world. Our international viewers, you've just witnessed something very special on the streets of Surface Paradise. Mate, awesome. That's Aussie racing at its best, and a young Kiwi's played his part in it. Shane Van Gisberg, and there's celebrations all around. A win, Capanoa. Win race 20 of the championship. So these are the results, provisional, of course. <laughs> Mark Winterbottom and Luke Yulden started on pole position and they salvage a third after a pretty tough weekend for Ford Performance Racing. Mid-pack, Coulthard and Reynolds, Jonathan Webb and Sebastian Bourdais had their troubles as well. Poor old Elio Castro-Neves. Boy, what a weekend. The Armour All Gold Coast 600 has delivered it all. Beautiful weather, spectacular racing, and what a finish this afternoon. Time for the podium presentations, and making the presentation on behalf of our major sponsor, Armour All, is Paul Blair, the marketing manager. Paul, thanks once again for your great support. And the Honourable Andrew Fraser, the Treasurer of Queensland, to make the presentation on behalf of the Queensland Government, another great supporter. First presentation we have is the Best Placed International Driver Trophy. And congratulations, Team Vodafone and Andy Prio. Andy, well done. Congratulations. Worth the trip. You've got a surfboard and best international driver. Yeah, it's absolutely worth the trip. I had a fantastic event. It's uh, the V8 Supercars is a great spectacle, and the Surfers Paradise track is awesome. So, thanks to all the team, to Team Vodafone, Triple Eight, really looked after me well. Thanks to Lounsey. Hard luck today, this afternoon, mate. But. Uh, 
it's a pleasure to drive with him and uh, I'm pleased that I brought the car home in one piece and I hope I get invited back one day in the future. <laughs> I'm sure you will, Andy. Thank you very much. Congratulations. We'll let you grab your trophy. Third place today for Ford Performance Racing, Mark Winterbottom and Luke Yulden. <laughs> Frosty, congratulations. That's some fight back from yesterday. Yeah, some fight back from yesterday with a damaged car. And thanks to the guys for fixing it. And some fight back from that pit stop we had. I, I don't know what happened there. So uh, nice to get back on the podium. Um, thanks, guys. We keep fighting. And, uh, you know, another surfboard. So thank you. <laughs> and Luke, congratulations again. A great result. Yeah, thank you. I had to redeem myself from obviously the start yesterday, but uh, I'm not sure what happened in the pit stop either, but uh, thanks for the guys. We managed to uh, get across the line. Frosty just drove extremely well there towards the end. Thank well you. done, guys. Congratulations. Our runner is up today. Boy, what a finish they put on for SP Tools Racing. Shane Van Gisbergen and John McIntyre. Boys, come on in. Shane, congratulations. That was one of the greatest jewels we have ever seen in those final laps. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it was on. And uh, just having the cool suit today was so much better. And my mind was focused at the end. But um, really, yesterday, I didn't thank my sponsors enough. So thanks, SP Tools, Ford, and all the, all the SPR uh, associates, and also the team themselves. It's, um, it's been an awesome day today, and um, I couldn't be happier. And now Johnny and I can take mate surfing. <laughs> John. Congratulations. What was it like sitting in the garage for those final few laps? It's pretty nerve-wracking nerve with the excitement machine behind me here, having a big go. But uh, look, again, we've stepped up again, third yesterday, second today. Uh, we can only go one better next time. So thank you, everyone. Thanks. And uh, all the Ford fans out here, good to see a Blue Falcon up here. Well done, John. Well done, Shane. Congratulations. Our trophy now, the team's trophy for our highest placed team. And congratulations, the winning team, Team Vodafone. And Roland Dane to accept the trophy. Roland, congratulations, well done. Another great team effort from Team Vodafone, which brings us to first place for Team Vodafone. Would you please congratulate Jamie Wincup and Steve Owen. <laughs> Jamie Wincup. You are the Iceman. That was some pressure that Shane Van Gisbergen put you under. Yeah, thanks, Barrett. Um, she was on out there. Thanks, Gold Coast, for coming out. Awesome weekend. Um, and I'm so proud to give Steve, everyone at Team Vodafone, and uh, apparently holding her undefeated. So uh, thanks very much. Well done, Jamie. Congratulations. Steve, great teamwork, a huge team effort. Yeah, absolutely. To, to have an ordinary sort of result yesterday and, and have it spent a late night last night, turn that around. Just a credit to everyone in the Vodafone team, you know. Jamie showed why he's got number one on the side of the car. And, uh, you know, just congratulations to the whole team. It's been a fantastic result. Well done, guys. Let you take your place at the top of the party. Would you please congratulate our winners from the Armour All Gold Coast 600.